have a spirit. It's much like, well, it's, it's life is what it is. And God blew into Adam's nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Our spirit never sleeps. Our bodies get tired and they sleep. But our spirit man probably just sends us dreams through the night just to keep busy. In America, <clears throat> we have been so blessed that we, and I say we, have a tendency to not spend the time with the Lord that we ought to be because everything is going well. But we are living in a prophetic season that is light and that is also darkness. And <clears throat> we are living in a season in which God desires to bless us. We are living in a season where God desires to bless us. We're living in a season where God desires to bless us. Amen. Amen. But we have to pursue the blessing. We have to, to let God know that we are ready to receive. Instead of us waiting on God, God is waiting on us. He is waiting for us to call upon him. God loves relationship with his children. He truly does. He loves it. He loves it when we get on our knees and just begin to share our lives with him and to share our problems and our difficulties, our struggles. He loves that. And the very big difference between an earthly father and our spiritual father, God, is that our spiritual father can do anything. And he desires to do anything in our lives. And we have to... We have to, well, I'm going to get ahead of myself. So um, I want to use for uh, a title today, um, Getting in Touch with Our Spirit Man. Because we can live in the spirit or we can live in the flesh. Living in the flesh does not always mean we're sinning, but it can also mean that our whole action and reaction to this world is simply on a logical basis. Uh, this happens, and this is the, the response, you know. And, and we live in this very limited world where it is mostly thoughts that determine our direction, how we feel, what kind of attitude we have, uh, and and. At that time, we are really limiting ourselves. We are, we are operating more in self than we are in the spirit. Because if we were operating in the spirit, we would look beyond this world and realize, like God says in Ephesians chapter 2, that we are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. In our spirits... We are seated together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And how do we get there? You always take one of those moments where we get on our knees and we go before our Father and just begin to, to ask him or tell him, Lord, Father, I want to live where you live. I want to walk where you walk. I want to to walk where Jesus is and Holy Spirit is and where the holy angels are. I, I want to walk in that place, Lord. I've walked the earth. I, I, I can tell you a whole lot of things about me walking the earth, Lord. I'm very familiar with them, but I'm not too familiar with walking in your spirit. Walking where you are, seeing what you see, hearing what you're saying. You know, Jesus' whole life 
and, and by the way, Jesus is our model example. His whole life was walking in the Spirit. Jesus never, ever was bound to this world. He never looked at, at, at struggles through the eyes of the flesh. He always went to the Father. Always, 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 always. He had this awesome relationship with the Father. And it's the same type. That relationship is the relationship that God desires that you and I have with him. And in this time in which we're living, y'all, here are some of the good things that God is doing. We are in a season where darkness has so covered the earth and gross darkness, the people, that God is willing to intervene on our behalf if we ask him. We, we, we got to quit just letting things go by us and tormenting us and, and slowing us down and take it to the Father. Ask him, Father, I know that we are in a season where you yourself are willing to intervene on my behalf. Lord God, I ask you to intervene on my behalf. And then just get out of the way. Don't start trying to figure out how he's going to do it. Just flow with your faith in him, his ability to do it. Just flow with him. Just flow with the spirit of God. I want to uh, bring out some scriptures, and, and, I, and I won't take too long. Every time I say that, it's, it turns out to be a fib. <laughs> All right. Acts 17, 26. Acts 17, 26. And he made, you don't have to turn, you can write them down. Uh, if you want to turn to them, that's fine. But every time I turn to one, I'm going to go ahead and read, okay? And he made from one common or origin, one source, one blood, all nations of men to settle on the face of the earth, having definitely determined their allotted periods of time and the fixed boundaries of their habitation, their settlement, lands, and abodes. And then Esther 4.4. 4. I'm going to try to do this one from memory. And who knows that, that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. And then Ephesians 1 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And then Ephesians 2 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision. All right, I didn't get the right one. Hang on. All right, hold on, y'all. All right, verse 10, Ephesians 2, 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And then Philippians 2, 13. For it is God who both wills and to do of his good pleasure. For it is God which worketh in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God <clears throat> had an exact period in time when each of us would be born. 
Acts 17 and verse 26 tells us that not only did God know when we would be born, but he also knew what nation we would be in. Aren't you glad to have been born in the United States of America? To be a citizen in the United States of America? Our nation is suffering right now from a darkness that is being spread by the children of Satan. But the darkness will never touch us. Those of us who are walking in the light as he is in the light, that darkness cannot touch us. And our uh, desire should be to pray for those who are in darkness. While they still have life in their bodies, they can be saved. Because what a man sows, he shall also reap. And the Lord says to all of the world, I set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Choose you this day whom you will serve. And, and so these, there are individuals who are as strong a follower of, of Satan as we are of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they need prayer. They need prayer because if they die in their sin, they're going to get the, the surprise of all eternity. You and I, we can't even begin to imagine what it would be like to die without the Lord. To have some horrible, stench, stinky, smelling demons come up and grab that individual and drag them down to hell. To drag them down to a place that is, that's torment day and night. The Lord said they will never rest. They will never rest. That there's just no time of resting. It's just continuous torment. Why? Because Satan hates human beings. And he will do anything to deceive people into thinking that he, he is their savior and that he will bless them. That he will do this and he will do that. He will do all of that just so he can laugh at that individual when they end up in hell. He'll do all that he can to keep them from hearing the gospel. He will do anything he can to stop a human being from coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. He tried to stop Jesus, didn't he? He tried to stop him. He tried to get Jesus to fall into sin. But Jesus refused. No, you're not going to take me anywhere, Satan. For it is written, and I will follow my Father's word. I will obey my Father's word, for in him is the abundant life. <clears throat> And so, each of us, we're not here by accident. Not a single one of us are here by accident. We have been born in a time such as this. And what I really like about uh, God using us, you know, <clears throat> Esther was not a fall on your knees, worship God type of a person. Matter of fact, I believe it's the book of Esther where the word, the name God is not even mentioned in the whole book. And yet, God sent her into this world at a specific time to save all the Israelites from Satan's hatred of them and Satan's desire to destroy and to kill them. And because she was so pretty, the king listened to Esther. And uh, this man, Haman, who had brought up this, this, this idea to kill all Jews in all the 127 prov provinces, provinces of the known world. But God used Esther to turn that on Haman. And the, the gallows that were meant for Mordecai and all the Jews, God hung Haman on there. He hung him there. But Esther never really came into really knowing God, at least not in the book of Esther. And sometimes we struggle with, well, what does God want me to do? You know, am I doing what God wants me to do? 
And here's what we, here's all we have to do, saints. You and I as Christians, we just obey God. We seek God. We ask of God. And then we just flow in our faith. And God will bring us to the place where we need to be and where we ought to be. And, and, and you know, we all have those struggles. I was listening to Chris Ann's testimony. We all go through that, don't we? We've all had moments where we wondered if we were really saved, you know? Well, if you're born again, if you have invited Jesus Christ into your life, you have been made a brand new creation that never existed before. Old things, says God, have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. But we have to get in the spirit to be to become acquainted with all of those new things. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Spiritual blessings are those blessings that you can't see with your eyes. One of the spiritual blessings is wisdom. Another one of them is righteousness. Another one of them is love. Another one of them is faith. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. We, we have it all. Those are the new things. Right. Behold, all things are become new. Right. And, but we have, to, we have to seek God and ask him how to get there. You know? You ever decided you was going to go to a place where you never been? Didn't take a map? Just say, oh, I'll get there. I, I'll, I'll find the way. <laughs> and you get in your car and you go <laughs> and an eight hour trip is now 16 hours long because we didn't know the way the Lord will show us the way if we just simply call on his name believe in faith that he is going to show us and flow with our faith let's be surprised We'll be surprised at the things that happen. And, and you know, that was my prayer before God. Uh, Father, I, I don't know how to get to where you are, really. You know, I know that you say, uh, if you love me, you'll obey me. I know that you said to present my body as a living sacrifice. I, I know that you, you said that uh, it, it is your desire for me to do your will, but I don't know the way to walk as Jesus did in this world. And he just began to show me just wonderful things happening. You all, I'm telling you, if you ask God, he'll show you. It's been, it was back on uh, the last week in February. I, I got to go to uh, Jackson, Mississippi to uh, this meeting where uh, this gentleman named uh, John Perkins uh, was doing the speaking. And <clears throat> I got there. Uh, it was like any other meeting. And then the meeting opened up in prayer. And you all, I tell you, I, 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 I try not to exaggerate. The whole atmosphere changed. I'm telling you, the whole atmosphere changed. It felt like I was halfway in my body and halfway out. And the room was so full of a really strong spirit of unity. It was so strong. And I remember something caught my peripheral vision's attention. And, and I looked to the, to the right, and here comes these three ladies walking in. And, and when I looked at them, I didn't know if they were angels or human beings. So I tried to meet them after the meeting, so I'd know. But... All through that meeting, it was like everybody was on air, sitting on air. This was all because I asked God, I want to see what you see, Father. I want to hear your voice, Father. God, I don't hear it enough. And when I do, <clears throat> there are times that God has spoken very clearly, but I've asked him, I said, Father, I want to hear that all the time, you know. And, and, and he's going to answer that one way or the other. You know, but I've heard God's voice. I heard him when he said, <clears throat> build me a church. 
I heard that. I, it, you can say it's your inner ear, but it sounded like it came from outside in. And he said other things to me. But there comes times, you know, especially in ministry, you know, and, and I've, in training with our ministers who have come up through, through Church of the New Covenant, I've always said, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Seek God. And not knowing that a lot of all that training, I was also talking to myself because sometimes we get stuck. Sometimes we get in a place where we just question. We question where we are and are we doing what God wants us to do? And, and <clears throat> just recently, Holy Spirit said, you're all right, son, just stay out of the way. Flow with your faith. If you believe that you receive, just flow with it, and I'll do it. I'll get you there. We have all been predestined, all of us, by God. Every individual who has ever been born in this world was sent here by God. And that individual was sent here with a purpose. And God knew from before the foundation of the world who was going to be saved and who wasn't going to be saved. And there are literally, I would say, billions of people who never came to God through Christ who will never know what their purpose was in being born into this earth because they never came to Christ. Their path was a path of, of self-will. Their path was a path of of satisfying the lust of the flesh and the lust of the mind. That was their path. They never got on the path of righteousness. They never knew the joy of it. They never knew the blessing of it. Uh, you and I know what it's like to walk in the world. I've done that. I, I was, as Paul would say, I was a chief of sinners. I know what that's like. And it was just trouble all the time. You spend so much time trying to clean up your mess. And then, you know, at one, probably for about the umpteenth time, I said, enough is enough. And I just surrendered it all to the Lord. I gave it all to him. Lord, I'm going to give it to you. I'm not going to live my life in, in, my, in and of myself anymore. I'm giving you my life. Now you use me to, to do your will. You use me. And he pre destined me when I was about eight years old. We had a park in town where I lived. The park was just down the hill from the church. And all of us kids would be down there playing, swinging on the merry-go-round, uh, playing uh, softball, uh, shooting baskets. And all the kids called me preacher, 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 preacher. And to this day, I... I I don't know what I said, but I was at that place. We had been taught by uh, the pastor's wife, Sister Shook, and she was able to bring the Bible down to our level. And we learned a lot about Jesus Christ. And so my heart was open to him. And because my heart was open to him, obviously I was, he was speaking through me his word. You see, we are that vessel that God desires to express to the world his love, that God desires to express to this world his power, that God desires to express through us to the world that I want all men and women to be saved. That is my desire. And, and, and <clears throat> that will not happen until we die to self, until we let self go, and, and, and until we make the determination that I'm not going to walk halfway in the world and halfway in the spirit. And we all have been there. I, I, this is something else I've learned as a, as a pastor. Don't stand up here and preach condemnation because you've been there too. That is the way it works. We have to stumble and fall usually several times before we realize that this is not working. 
And it's at that time that we surrender ourselves to the Lord. And then the Lord begins to take us on the most beautiful journey that we've ever been on. Sometimes I say, Lord, why did it take so long? (laughs) You know. There is a destiny that God desires to fulfill in all of us. All of us. We don't try to fulfill it. Because it's his work. Our job is to be yielded. Our job is to present ourselves as living sacrifices. Philippians 2.13. For it is God himself who worketh in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. He'll do that. I don't know how many times I get up here after spending the week writing down sermon notes. And there's so many messages I haven't (laughs) preached. (laughs) Because I'll get up here and God will have something else. You know? And it used to make me feel uneasy. I'm going to really crash into the wall on this one. You know? But it doesn't bother me anymore. I'm learning. I'm getting to that place where, Lord, it's you. This, I give myself, that song, I give myself away. I give myself away, Lord, so that you can use me. And I know most of you. I I know you in a way that I know that you're living that life. And, And you're probably having doubts. Sometimes you all... It's just simply God's will in you is just to smile at somebody, you know, just to help somebody, uh, just to be positive, you know, and to speak good things, to lift people up and not tear them down. Amen. It's God's will. We're doing God's will. We're doing more of God's will than what we realize as we walk in obedience and just stay there. It's when somebody calls upon you when things can get a little difficult because you go back to, well, what am I going to do and how am I going to do this? You know, that's what we do. We used to fall back on self. And, and it's nothing new. Moses did it. Jeremiah did it. Isaiah did it. I mean, there's so many of those prophets, when you read about their calling, they, they struggle with self. You know, Moses, Lord, I can't speak. I I can't speak. Moses, I'll put my words in your mouth. Yeah, but Lord, I can't speak. But Moses, I'll put my words in your mouth. (laughs) You know, and he went on until God became angry. He just couldn't catch on. God will do through you what he desires to do if you are just yielded. And walking in obedience. Flowing with your faith. God will show you the way. And you will begin to experience things. In the spirit you all. You will begin. God will begin to allow you to experience things. That you do not see in this natural world. He'll take you there. If you want to walk with him. He'll take you there. A little at a time, I'm sure. And each one of us is an individual. And he's going to go with you according to your individuality. It's not a cookie cutter type thing. It's not the same for everybody. You are an individual before God. God knows you by name. God knows the number of hairs that are on your head. God knows everything there is to know about you, and he knows exactly how to approach you in order to answer your prayer concerning walking with him. He knows how to take you there, and he will. We are getting ready. God is getting us ready. I know that 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 God is getting us ready for the greatest outpouring of his spirit that this world has ever known. And for those who will say to the Lord, yes, 
He's going to use you. He's going to use you. He may even surprise you. You know, I've listened to some of the testimonies given on uh, Sid Roth, and, and this one guy was talking about, uh, I laid hands on, on, on this guy, and I just have to be honest with you, I, I wasn't sure that when I did that he was going to be healed, but when I laid hands on him, pow, right there, the Lord healed that person. Well, this was a man who walked in obedience. This is a man who wanted to be used by God, you know. And, and so what happened, when something like that happens, that means Holy Spirit has intervened. The gifts of healings. The gifts of healings. He just intervened and pow, that guy was, was healed. The individual was healed. You don't have to struggle with it all. God's got it. For it is he who worketh in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. When I get to heaven, I, I, I want to hear him say, well done. I truly, truly do. That's, that, I felt that from the moment I was called. I want to hear him say, well done. And that's part of what caused the struggle, you know. Am I doing what you want me to do? Da, 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 all that back and forth and back and forth. I don't want to be one of those people. Where he, when I get there, he has to wipe the tears from my eyes because he shows me this is what you could have done. You know, that's what wiping tears from our eyes, that's what that's all about in Revelation 21. That's what it's all about. It's not about bad memories because those, he says, have all been taken away. It's about what we could have done and didn't do. And, of course, God is a God of love and, and, and is not going to punish us or anything like that. But he, he's saying this is what you could have done, you know. The world can be alluring out there, you know. But as Jehoshaphat said, my eyes are on you, Lord. As David said, I will lift mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Amen. I don't know. I, I can't even begin to say how long we're going to be on this theme. But God wants us to become more familiar with the spirit man because that's where he's living in our spirit. When we invited him in. He came in and gave life to our dead spirits. We became, what is it, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. That's where the Lord is. And that's where God wants us to live. He wants us to live in this newness of life. To live. In the spirit of Christ, which is the Holy Ghost. That's what he desires. Amen. Did that help you all? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's just stand. Hallelujah. If you are having difficulty getting where you would like to be in the Lord, right now is a good time to take that before our Heavenly Father. Right now. To take it before Him. He wants to help you. Praise your name, oh God. Praise your name. Hallelujah. He is saying to you that you and I together are going to do great things. You and I together. Ask of me and I will give it to you. Praise you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Together. Father God. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name, we bow before your loving, holy, almighty presence to thank you for your love towards us, oh God. To thank you that to you we are so important. To you we are special. You called us your own special people in the book of Acts. The book of John. Help us to know that, Father. That in the spirit we are your own possession. We are your inheritance. And we thank you and give you praise. Father, thank you for working in the hearts of these who have called out to you today. 
Thank you that you hear and answer prayer. Thank you that it is your desire to walk with us as you walked with the Lord Jesus. Thank you for bringing it to pass. Here a little, there a little. More light, more understanding, more revelation. We thank you and give you praise, Almighty Father God. In Jesus' name, the name which is above all names. The name at which demons tremble. The name through which the sick are healed. The bound delivered. The name of Jesus. For there's none other name given on earth amongst men. That can save us. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Spirit, mighty Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We ask you to do your will, Lord. To take us spiritually to a higher place, a higher level. Have your way, Lord. <sighs> Praise your holy name. Mm. Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> 